uh, I request that you uh, you hold your your questions until we come to the end. We are going to provide as much information as possible. This is just the beginning. We have been in the media for quite some time. Sorry, I had accidentally been locked out. I hope this situation will not uh, happen again. Uh, let me uh, go straight to the, uh, to the presentation. So my presentation will give a, a background uh, to the ICO and the, then I will go straight to the extension of the International Coffee Agreement, then straight away to the Uganda's concerns to be addressed in the new agreement tangible benefits uh, from the international co organizations, implications of Uganda not joining the extension, and the position of other ICO members on the extension of the agreement, then I will conclude. Uh, stakeholders, as I mentioned, Uganda has been a member of the uh, international co organization uh, since uh, many years. Uh, the International Coffee Organization is an intergovernment organization for coffee, bringing together exporting and importing members. But the main aim of all these uh, governments is to tackle challenges facing the coffee sector through intergovernmental uh, international cooperation. ICO mission is to strengthen the global trade and promote sustainable expansion in the market-based development, the betterment of the, all participants in the coffee value chain. When ICO was set up in 1963, under the auspices of the United Nations, uh, it was meant to administer the International Coffee Agreement, which is an important instrument for development cooperation. The latest agreement we are discussing now is the International uh, Coffee Agreement of 2007, which entered in force in 2nd February 2011. Uganda signed the International Coffee Agreement 2007 on the 21st of September 2009 and ratified it on 1st March 2010. On the 29th of September, 2007, the Council of the ICO approved the resolution 431, adopting the text of the International Copy Agreement 2007, and designated the ICO as the de depository of the International Copy Agreement of 2007. Therefore, as some of the stakeholders have been alluding, ICO is not a UN organization, and is no longer a, uh, an affiliated agency of the UN. Rather, the depository of the instruments of the agreement is the International Coffee Organization itself. What are the issues regarding the extension of the International Coffee Agreement 2007? As I mentioned, since the inception of 1963, uh, the implementation or operations of the International Coffee Organization has been based on agreements. Uh, why agreements? Because there are many interests, there are many changes uh, in the coffee industry that need to be addressed. 
the current agreement we are talking about is uh, uh, of 2007 is a 10-year agreement, which was meant to expire in 2017. So in 2018, the council formed a working group on the future of the coffee agreement. Since then, uh, discussions of the text of the new agreement have been ongoing for almost three years. I hasten to add, before the expiry of the agreement in 2017, there should have been discussions about the new agreement, but there were, the discussion didn't happen until it had even expired, which of course brings in the, the, the issues, the concerns of Uganda. In September, 2020, the council approved a resolution 471 extending the International Coffee Agreement for another year up to February 2022. And Uganda was a signatory in this. I was happy representing your country uh, with my alternate, the, the Air Commission of Uganda in London. In August, 2021, the council approved an extension of the agreement for further year until February, 2023. However, the text of the new agreement until then did not reflect any new measures to address the challenges faced by the coffee producers and their aspirations. Uganda together with other coffee producers have raised concerns which need to be addressed in the new agreement. Many of you who have been in the export trade recall uh, the agreement before that they expired, uh, the, the one which preceded 2007, had quotas. Uh, and therefore, some of these quotas were meant to, uh, to help uh, find markets for the Ugandan and other producing countries' markets. But this agreement of 2007 doesn't have quotas. And that's where uh, Uganda thought that uh, since the main role of the ICO is actually uh, providing statistics, we should have more as coffee producers because these statistics are generated by exporting countries. And therefore, uh, we needed to have more issues because there has been many challenges in the coffee sector, especially uh, under, uh, within the producing countries. So Uganda's concerns that were raised with the ICO uh, to be included in the, IC, in the new agreement are as follows. Number one, promotion of value addition. Uganda has been and is famous for exporting the green beans. All of us have questioned this, and especially the farmers, we know when you export green beans, uh, add, value is added in the importing countries, we are exporting dollars, we are exporting jobs, we are exporting revenues. And therefore, uh, if we are export, if we are going to have maximum value of the, our coffee, we need to have uh, an interplay where we can export value added coffee, export uh, the coffee as a finished product. The new agreement needs to focus on value addition with protected programs that aim at funds transferring values of the, to the farm guide, that is to the farm level. For example, a cup of coffee at a coffee shop is more valuable than one kilo of uh, coffee at the farm gate. So that is uh, an illustration that we are actually exporting jobs, we are exporting revenues, we are exporting uh, incomes. Barriers to trade, especially uh, barriers to export processed coffee. Many of you in the industry know about uh, all of this, about the tariffs which are there, uh, and these are curtailing export of value added products. Importing countries uh, impose escalating tariffs and restrictions on imports of value added coffee. Uh, many of you have been hearing this, uh, the recent report in where Uganda, we are very happy that we exported uh, 6.1 million bags worth 559 um, million US dollars. But 
Switzerland, which has not even a grain of coffee, after adding value, they more than uh, tripled our value because they were adding value to our processed coffee. But let Ugandan coffee uh, access that market. That's where now we have tariffs. And for one kilogram of roasted coffee, for example, exporting to Germany, uh, we have to pay 2.19 euros. And a kilogram of soil coffee, we have to pay double the amount. Is it what we wish for the country? Is it what we as producers would want to have? Under the German tax law, the tailors established uh, in other countries selling coffee to Germany must appoint a fiscal representative located in Germany. This is what has been discuss discussing. I won't go to the details, but many of you in the, uh, in the trade know uh, of this tax. In addition to Germany, Belgium, Denmark also charge the tax. These are barriers to, uh, that should be negotiated and removed in order to create even more value for Ugandan coffee and other producing countries coffee. There are no taxes on green beans. Of course, because they want to have green beans to add more, uh, add value and export. This encourages import of green beans, which are re-exported to other countries. Uganda government has repeatedly declared the lost opportunity now export of green coffee and thus uh, appropriate negotiations are urgently required. And as a delegate of Uganda, that's uh, what I, I needed to do. Two, three, we have uh, an issue of coffee price for authority. All of us are aware about these uh, price for authorities after the, the quotas, how it has impacted and it threatens incomes of some farmers. Many of you are aware some farmers had started cutting coffee trees. Although we, ha we are having a very high price right now, uh, this is just uh, temporary. It's largely because of the parameters that befell Brazil and restrictions in the, in the export imposed by the COVID pandemic in the, the second exporter, uh, Vietnam. And we want to see how together at international level, we can have a mechanism on stabilizing these prices. Uh, these, there are structural weaknesses uh, and we want to ensure sustainable growth. If we are going to implement coffee roadmap, we need to be sure that farmers are not going to be frustrated and start cutting down their coffee trees. Uh, an interesting aspect that traders may look at is the ICO composite indicator price. I want to give you uh, uh, information that I have been privileged to represent Uganda. Uh, in the statistical committee, I have been also the vice chairman first in, 19, uh, in 2018 of the uh, finance and administration committee and the committee voted me the following year to be the chair. So I have intricate and detailed information about the ICO which I want to share with you. When we looked at the uh, ICO composite indicator prices, we dug deep. We actually realized that ICO does not have an instrument to collect these uh, prices. Rather, it uses agents in, in countries where we, are importing, where we are exporting our coffee. In the United States, there is a complete coffee uh, coverage, which is an agent private sector, Germany, there is the Germany Coffee Association and France, we have French Coffee Association. These agents from the three countries bring together the, the, the prices and that's why ICO bases uh, this place as a benchmark. This is the one we are using on daily trading around the world. This place was, cre was created as a uh, for a regulated market when the quotas were still in place until 1989. Uh, uh, it is outdated and needs to be revised. That time we used to see the importing countries where we are exporting to see the, uh, uh, the demand, the consumption, and we match it with the production and export from our countries. This is what we are pushing to have reforms in ICO. We cannot be working on 
some of the parameters of 1989, uh, where uh, we are operating in quarters. And these are concerns, uh, if you agree with me, which are very genuine uh, for any liberalized market. Classification of uh, coffees. Uganda is the best place of Robusta coffee. We all know that. Ethiopia is the origin of Arabica coffee. Our production consists of 80% Robusta, 20% Arabica. But countries producing Arabica coffee are grouped in one of the three groups established in the agreement, namely Colombia mild Arabicas, Brazilian natural Arabicas, and other mild Arabicas according to the Arabic as they produce. What is surprising to you is that Uganda is not uh, known anywhere. It, we are just part of the uh, other Robustas. Uh, Ethiopia, the origin of robust Arabica coffee, falls under the mild Arabicas. We've been asking, what is the basis of this classification? Is it because uh, Brazil has been dominating the market. Is it because Colombia has been dominating the market? We want this transparency. We want to be known, to be known uh, as Uganda coffee, uh, as origin with the greatest genetic diversity. That is how we promote our coffee. So again, this is an issue of concern because uh, the, uh, the issues of transparency need to come out in these negotiations and clarifications has to be uh, based on a criteria. We are aware that this clarification were uh, established during the quotas. That's when they were introduced, but the quotas are no more. Uh, so why do we stay with the same classification? What is interesting to you is that Contribution to the ICO or subscription to the ICO are based on the volumes of coffee. So Uganda as a leading export of coffee, of course, ICO is looking at increased contributions or subscription to them. We don't have any problem, but we are looking at a fair uh, computation of these, uh, of these contributions. And this, uh, this is not a Ugandan issue. We have actually raised it. I want to give you good news that uh, another intergovernmental inter organization called the Inter-Africa Coffee Organization, in the new agreement, they have moved from uh, computing comp contribution based on volume, but rather on value. Why? Because our robust coffee, which is 80%, if it is linked to, the, uh, to those inaccurate calculations of IC ICO composite price, makes us pay more than what actually value we, we could have got. So we want to see how the computation is <laughs> rather than on the volume. But also we have another issue. We have countries which don't grow coffee, but they export the coffee and they are classified as important. Shut up, shut up, shut up. They only pay uh, for uh, as re-exporting, but yet they are importing and re-exporting. What category did they fall? In addition, uh, we are looking at the, uh, I gave an example of the uh, Germany, uh, how much they import and how much is the uh, finally exported uh, and how uh, unfair it is to us who are only exporting because we believe they are paying less than what actual value they should pay. Then we are seeing uh, an intergovernmental organization, which is increasingly being controlled by private sector. I think uh, this is unfair. Yes, government sets policies uh, and implementation is going down to the private sector. But in a, in a situation where even uh, Africa is not represented in the private sector at all, it is the importing countries whose private sector are on these negotiations. So increasingly, we are finding uh, importing countries influencing through governments, but also through private sector. Uh, and this, of course, weakens the, the, weakens the, the producing countries. Uh, we are not on a round table. 
we are more on a rectangular table. So the private sector parties include the private sector consultative board, the coffee public uh, private task, task force, and the CEOs and global leaders forum. For the colleagues in the private sector, you could uh, testify where, whether you are represented in any of these private sector bodies. So we are saying the, uh, the new agreement, which is proposing even to establish a board of affiliate members comprising private sector and civil society, will weaken the role of the governments in the ICO decisions, because producing countries will not have that muscle to be part of that board. Rather, we are going to have a board uh, which is uh, part of the, and which largely can influence the decisions of the, uh, of the ICO. And therefore it will lose the meaning of being an intergovernmental organization. Uh, with the challenges in the coffee sector since the inception, ICO uh, has been having a source of funding to, uh, to support some of those, solving some of those challenges in producing countries. However, since 2012, the Common Fund for Commodities stopped giving funding to member states via ICO. So any member can directly uh, approach the Common Fund for Commodities and process a project on its own. So ICO role in uh, soliciting funding to some of, support some of these challenges is no longer there. So uh, ICO is, has not found an alternative because they were notified beforehand. That's the issue we have been telling them. We knew common fund for commodities was not coffee fund, but it was for all commodities. They have decided to go it around. What alternative have you put in place? So we are still grappling here with challenges of coffee farmers, including climate change, raw production and productivity, pests and diseases, price volatility, uh, which are being faced by uh, many farmers in Uganda and all over the, the globe. And this is where we are asking ICO, can you reinvent the wheel? These are genuine concerns. If we are going to tackle challenges, it's not about talking about challenges, we know them but how, what solutions are we having? We need to have that instrument. Uh, as the chair of the uh, Finance and Administration Committee, I want to assure you that I was very taken back by looking at how ICO budget is appropriated. Just as an example, you have a budget of 1.8 uh, million pounds, but personal costs, and premises constitute 80%. Why program of activities cost only 67%? <laughs> so are we picking air tickets to go and discuss about how the remuneration of staff and premises are being apportioned? Or we are going to discuss about program of activities which can <laughs> ameliorate uh, all sort of challenges in the coffee sector? We know ICO is not a funding agency, but can you bring out some ideas? Can you apportion quite some uh, chunk of money out of this so that this can be uh, used, for example, to establish a technical fund, uh, which could be split between the administration and, and also the, uh, <laughs> the some of these uh, challenges in the coffee sector. That is what Uganda is requesting for. Uh, is it genuine? It's, it's up to you to, to decide. With no common fund for commodities, which is our alternative, our only contributions. Uh, Uganda has been, uh, when we joined the organization and signed ratified the new agreement of 2007 uh, in September 2009, we expected to enhance our interests and expand our coffee market. However, it has become clear that if ICO cannot reinvent themselves, there is no real impact we are getting from, from there. The statistics I want to know ah! is the only benefit which we are getting from. But even then, this is sourced from other sources. As UCDA, we subscribe to other statistical sources. So, if ICO is saying they give out 
uh, statistics. How come that these statistics are not even sufficient and Uganda on top of adding money as subscriptions, uh, as membership, we are providing, we are continually looking for other information sources. Uh, some of these reports for the coffee sector you are familiar with, like the coffee in depth report, the Lynch International Coffee Report, uh, the, the US market, and the national coffee drinking trends. These are one, but a few of those we subscribe to with additional money on top of providing an organization which portrays itself as providing statistics. What are the implications? And I want to correct this. Uganda has not withdrawn from the ICO. Rather, Uganda is not joining the two years of extension of the ICE of the International Coffee Agreement because this is a negotiation, a negotiation issue. We want to see how the agreement can address the concerns raised by the producers. As Uganda, we have put them to them. They are not budging on them. I think because nobody had stood up to the ICO, it took them as a surprise. But I tell you, there are many surprises. When I was a chair, I found money was moving under the table. And I called together with other members on the finance committee, the dismissal of the finance and manager, uh, uh, finance and administration manager of the ICO, because I was guarding against loss of our money. If we are, we are going to fight corruption, it is not here. Only it has to be wherever we have our footprints. And this is where you are seeing uh, our engagement with them, giving them many issues they are taken by surprise. They could not believe an African to stand up to them, to tell them that your books are not being uh, properly accounted. And they considered, they agreed, yes, uh, we are supposed to have an uh, audit report, for example, after uh, six, six months after the end of the coffee year, three years down the road, no single report. You got the report, it doesn't capture anything. But even in the budget itself, errors, we had to go through many, many revisions. So if we are looking at a, an organization that stands up in that, in that manner, we need to show that Uganda is, a, uh, our concerns are uh, addressed, at least, let's see some of them to be, it's a negotiation issue, it's a genuine issue. Other countries have joined up in the same discussion and we want to have this. There is a concern by uh, coffee stakeholders I've been seeing on the uh, social media since yesterday about the ICO certificate of origin. I want to uh, inform you that the certificate of origin is beneficial for the ICO. It is used for correction of statistics. Without certificate of origin, they will not have the statistics. As Uganda, we have a fallback position if they say they don't want us to use the certificate of origin. We are not the first one. Uh, we, uh, we have other countries which have exited ICO uh, for good, and they are trading. They are using certificate of origin, not in a salary of ICO. But I also have to add that actually the certificate of origin for the ICO can be used by non-members, both members and non-members of ICO. It is a voluntary uh, action. We can use it, we cannot use it. However, a certificate of origin is required for our exports. And this is what I want to illustrate here. Not necessarily the ICO certificate. Uh, Vietnam joined us in uh, that protest. They were actually ahead of us. They are the second largest exporter. Uh, we, uh, United States self withdrew in 2018. Turkey had, had already withdrawn. Guatemala 2019 as the coffee producer. Paraguay 2019, because they were looking at tangible benefits from the ICO. So, Whereas for us, we are still negotiating so that some of our interests 
uh, can be uh, incorporated in the agreement, some countries have, have uh, decided to withdraw for good. Uh, this is an illustration of the certificate of origin. Uh, we are going to be sharing with you a format of the certificate of origin. Some of you have been using them. So without using the uh, ICO certificate of origin, we can still use Uganda certificate of origin for export to other countries. I want to array any fears that our coffee exports are going to be affected because we are not using certificate of origin from the ICO. It's not correct. Uh, the Uganda Chamber of Commerce and Industry uh, has been issuing this certificate, but now it is being used by uh, uh, many exporters have been using it in addition to the ICO certificate. As long as the customs accept this certificate, which they do, there is no worry about Uganda certificate of origin. We have all the variables that we capture in the uh, ICO certificate of origin, and these variables, in addition, are being captured in the Uganda certificate of origin. It costs at 20,000 shillings per consignment. This is a new, not a new fee. It has always been uh, used in addition to the ICO certificate of origin. For countries, for traders who are exporting within a Comesa, we have a Comesa certificate of origin. Uh, for all the products going to uh, our brothers in Sudan or Egypt, and uh, I, we are all informed about uh, uh, countries like Maghreb, Morocco, which will be soon, uh, soon joining Comesa, they, they are using this certificate. So the worry about ICO certificate should not arise. We have certificates which are, are, are substitutes to the certificate. In the conclusion, I want to array any fears about what has been going on. Uganda is on the table of the discussion. We have put them on the, uh, on the table uh, to be included. Once the text of the new agreement has been finalized, it may take two years, it may take longer, Uganda, including like any other member who is interested in coffee matters at the global level. Uganda will ratify this agreement by looking at the concerns, by looking at the interests to see whether they have been addressed. Our position is that we are not going to be members of ICO for the sake of being members, but our interests must be addressed. Uh, this is again, an issue of negotiation. We may take, we may get all the issues addressed. We may have a few of them. And once we have this new agreement, I want to emphasize, Uganda will study all the clauses, all the clauses in all the articles in the agreement. And if we are satisfied, we will sign off like we have done since uh, 1963. Even for those members who are or the table in the negotiation. They will still take the back to the to their headquarters, to their capitals, and check uh, close by close to ensure that the, int uh, the interests of their countries are catered for in the agreement. So what are we gaining and losing in this process? We are, instead of sending this money to the ICO, can we use it in other tangible issues to address challenges of farmers. Uh, as Uganda, we are focusing now on value addition, domestic coffee consumption. But we have another organization we work with, the Inter-Africa Coffee Organization, uh, which we are working to strengthen. Uh, this organization is headquartered in Abidjan, in the Ivory Coast. Uh, it is uh, uh, the Secretary General is a Ugandan. Uh, he's succeeding another Secretary General. The reforms that have been spearheaded uh, by two, these two gentlemen and their predecessors is pushing uh, this uh, organization to actually address most of the challenges we are discussing here that the ICO is not addressing. For example, we are now under the uh, Inter-Africa Coffee Organization. They have set up a coffee facility, 
which is going to be supporting domestic coffee consumption in Africa. We can trade within Africa where we have our, our leaders have negotiated uh, free entry of value added products. We can also drink the coffee within Uganda. Uh, we can't consume it all, but we can trade within the regions. Uh, we can trade within Africa, but also importantly, the Inter-Africa Coffee Organization is negotiating at the African Union level to have coffee as a priority commodity under the Department of Agriculture at the, uh, in the African Union. This is where funding to uh, mitigate some of these challenges in the coffee sector can come from. If it is uh, uh, negotiated, if it is prioritized as a key commodity at the African Union level. But also as Africa, once we have this commodity as a priority, Uganda, rather Africa can negotiate as a single block, like Europeans negotiate as a single block. This is where we need to be pan-Africanist, look at what interests we have as Africa. Uh, I also uh, note that as a country, you cannot negotiate alone. That's why we have, even these issues, we have shared them with the, uh, with other uh, coffee producers, much as Uganda uh, through the first stone, we are the first one to write this letter with the uh, Vietnam. Other countries have come on board. So this is not a Ugandan issue, it's a coffee producer's issue. And we believe uh, we are going to have this, uh, uh, we are going to have a marriage. At least many of the concerns we have put, which we believe are very genuine, and are well supported by many of our, our countries are going to be uh, supported. Uh, I believe most of this is justification on how, on based on what instrument made Uganda uh, uh, give this notification. All of this is a, a long process that I will be sharing with you, but I wanted to clarify on the issues of why Uganda is not on the negotiation table, why whether Uganda has withdrawn from the ICO, and what happens during the space when Uganda is not uh, uh, on the negotiation table. Uh, but also, largely, if Uganda were to reconsider their position, I can tell you would go there in a weakened position. Because if this was a conditionality of not extending, of not joining the extension, and we go there now, we are telling them we are actually satisfied. That's, that, that is the issue. Even if those concerns, uh, they would not take, take us very seriously. So again, I want to thank you for listening in. I'm very committed and passionate about the coffee sector. We have seen the results on the ground and I want to thank all the stakeholders who have really uh, done a lot uh, in the space of the, uh, the last few years I've been you are, uh, at the rim of the UCDA. I mean well to the coffee sector and I'm committed. I know the, uh, this is not an easy, an, an easy word, word to, to pick, but with your support, with your, uh, with your support and also information, I'm willing to continue spearheading these negotiations until Ugandan farmers get the fair value of their, uh, of their sweat. I want to, uh, to, to end here, but I would like to, uh, to invite our alternate, uh, the High Commission in London. I hope he's, uh, uh, I know it is very end this morning, but the last chat we had last evening, he promised to come in. He has been interfacing uh, with, the, uh, with the executive director and the chairman of the council, and largely the issues we are discussing are the same. Ambassador Mugerwa, are you on Ryan? Yes, um, good morning, um, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is John Leonard Mugerwa, uh, Deputy High Commissioner, uh, Uganda High Commission London. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, Dr. Liamure um, and uh, UCDA for convening this um, important briefing uh, so that 
uh, all the stakeholders can be on the same page on this issue. I, I'd, li I'd like to just highlight a few points that um, Dr. Yamremia, the ED, has just uh, pointed out. Um, Uganda has been engaging on this issue and insisting that we need to see greater value from our participation in ICO. We would like to have the challenges that have been highlighted addressed, but this has not been forthcoming. And, and, and when it became very clear that there is no goodwill on the part of some of the uh, member states who are apparently dominating the, the negotiations, um, a decision, a recommendation was made that it is not uh, in our best interest to move forward with the negotiations as they are. And the, the chairperson of the ICO a Council and also the um, ED of um, the ICO met the High Commissioner, uh, Ambassador Julius Moto, uh, and myself um, in London. And we reiterated the, the main concerns uh, that Uganda has been putting on, on the table. Really, in, in, there are four. The first one is the the unfair treatment that we get with regard to non-tariff and tariff barriers, so that that restricts our value addition. And, and that means that we get less value for our coffee. The second one, uh, as Dr. Yamuremi pointed out, is the issue of classification. If you look at the classification, they only talk about Brazilian and, and Colombian and then others. A country that is the second largest producer of coffee in Africa and seventh in the world, our name does not appear anywhere um, in the classification. And that has implications for the kind of value that we get for, for our coffee. And the, the third issue, of course, is the, is the, the, the so-called indi indicative uh, price, which is not based on any sound statistical basis, but they just use it. And if you look at it, um, I, I think it will be good for UCDA to share with the members. If you look at that indicative price, you will see that the Brazilian coffee gets like $2.4. The Colombian is about 2.4 around there. But then the others are like in 1.04. So, and this is a matter that is dominated by ICO. And, and we know that they are vested interests of um, importing countries because if they keep our prices low, they import, they don't allow us to add value, and then they earn even three, four times more than the people who are sweating and, and, and growing the coffee um, in our countries, which is absolutely unfair. And this is something that um, if we, we really accept, then we are not going to go very far in, in terms of um, improving the livelihoods of our people, even uh, increasing our income. And, and then the, there's the issue of the governance, um, where you have an organization that spends 80% of the contributions on, on administration and, and emoluments and, and just spends a, a minuscule amount on programs that would be benefiting the, 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 the member countries, especially the producers. So based on, and, and the other points that um, uh, the ED mentioned, so based on this, it was very clear that uh, if we continue like this, we are, we are not going to, to, to get anywhere. And, and this is why um, the, the, the decision was taken, uh, of course, after consultations within government, that it is not in our best interest to, 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 to proceed like this. Um, regarding this, um, correspondence that we got from um, ICO, that it will no longer validate or accept uh, uh, certificates of origins from, you, from, from Uganda certified by UCDA. It, it doesn't have any impact because those certificates are only for statistical purposes. We can use our own um, certificates of origin and we'll trade fine. Um, again, they are trying to use this 
they have been using even other people to come to our capitals. There is a time when they wanted to, to, to come over so that they can be able to, to, to engage with the, our political leaders. We told them it's not necessary. They are seeing that what Uganda has done and what other countries have done. Guatemala exports about 4 million bags of coffee every year. It's the 10th um, uh, largest producer of coffee. They are not, they also left ICO because they realized that there was no benefit for them and they're still exporting. So it's not true that um, this is going to have any impact on us. We can use our own uh, certificate of origin and we'll trade fine. But going forward, and I, I think uh, this is very important, we need to support um, the, the Inter-Africa Coffee Organization. We need to make sure that we move towards uh, having speciality coffees for Uganda uh, and maybe later on within Africa so that we can pitch um, our products and, and be able to get more value for, for, for our coffee. And this is something that we've been working on um, together with the UCDA. We even had a, an event which we, we organized with the, the British High Commission in October last year. But still the challenge we are facing, if you want to import, to export processed coffee, the, 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 the price, I mean, the taxes that they put on the coffee are prohibitive. So this is something that we would expect an organization like ICO, where some of these importing countries are members to, if they're really genuine in international cooperation for the benefit, mutual benefit, they should be able to, 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 to address these issues, but they are not. So the initiatives of increasing uh, exports within Africa, in countries like Egypt, countries like um, Nigeria, countries like uh, Algeria, Morocco, we can, we can have more leverage there as we continue to insist that these legitimate concerns that we have as a country and as other exporters as well, producers, um, are addressed. So I would like to uh, stop here. Um, and just to reiterate that uh, the decision that is being taken is in the best uh, national interest of, of our country. Thank you. Thank you, Ambassador Mugerwa, for the clarification. I now want to invite the uh, uh, specifically uh, Ambassador Solomon Ritega, uh, the executive director of the Inter-Africa Coffee Organization. Uh, who has been spearheading some of the uh, interventions within the organization. Ambassador. Ambassador Solomon, are you there? Uh, I think he, he has Hello, gone over. Sorry. Yes, Hello. we can hear you. Can hear you. Sorry about this. It's uh, just one minute. Yes, thank you. Thank you, um, uh, Dr. Emmanuel, and also uh, Ambassador Mugerwa for the detailed uh, explanation and uh, information regarding this issue of the ICO debate. I'm not going to add much. I'm just going to really, on this issue of uh, the ICO certificate, I've received hundreds of uh, uh, messages asking what the implication will be on this certificate. And absolutely, I'm actually shocked. There's a lot of uh, lack of information and understanding on what the role of the ICO is, in, uh, especially among a lot of the member countries. Uh, this ICO certificate has no implication on our export. It is actually the ICO that needs this certificate of origin, as uh, Dr. Emmanuel uh, clearly explained. In fact, the focus now should be on why can't the African Union or the African Continental Free Trade Area issue its own certificate? Why do we have to rely on an external body to determine uh, what, uh, where the coffee goes? There are countries like China, Singapore, and South Korea. They're not members of the ICO, but are importing coffee from Uganda. So there's need, and I think, uh, Dr. Emmanuel, this is a very uh, important uh, 
uh, webinar where we have to inform our people on the role of some of these international and regional organizations. It seems there's a lot of uh, ignorance uh, because when I get all these messages, I'm surprised there are people thinking that because of an ICO certificate, Uganda will not be able to export its coffee. And that is not correct. So the focus, as Dr. Emmanuel explained, is we as Africans need to get our act together. We need to organize our house. Charity begins at home. We have to get these statistics within the region so that we're able to know how much coffee is going out, how much coffee is coming in. For example, in 2020, Africa exported nearly 12 million bags of green bean. Uh, equally imported 11 million bags, the same amount of coffee, but paid nearly 10 times the price to re-import this coffee back into the continent. And therefore this shows you how much money we've been donating for the last hundred years. We can't continue like this. So I wish to applaud the, the, the efforts that are being taken by Uganda to open the eyes of many of our producing countries. We need to sort our mess out. We need to go back to the drawing board. We need to start drinking what we produce so that we have at least some leverage in terms of negotiating for better prices. So in the case of the regional body, what we're trying to do now is to get the African Union to adopt coffee as a strategic crop under the AU uh, agriculture agenda. And then after that, we then go to the African continental free trade area and try to see how we can remove some of the uh, interregional barriers so that you don't have to export coffee, let's say from Abidjan back to Lagos, Nigeria, which has a population of 250 million people at about 10 times the price. So this, this is time we have to wake up, time to smell the coffee. So thank you, Emmanuel. Thank you, everybody. Uh, thank you, uh, Ambassador. Again, uh, the, the organization will be providing also uh, e extra information. Uh, Inter Africa Coffee Organization also has a research component, biological research. That's why we are looking at our own NACORI, linking with other uh, coffee research institutes in Africa, collaborate, share experiences, which we don't have in the ICO. Uh, in addition to the, what he has mentioned, we want to strengthen it to see whether it can serve the interests uh, for Uganda. Uh, at this juncture, let me ask uh, one of the most experienced people uh, who has been working with ICO for more than 35 years. He's a Kenyan based in London, and we have uh, worked uh, thick and thin in this issue. He understands the issues very well, particularly uh, the ICO certificate of origin, but also the experience of the quotas and all of what happened uh, to give you uh, uh, extra information about uh, how preparedness we are and what we should expect in the medium to short uh, to long term. Amida, are you there? Hello? Hello, good morning, everyone. My name is Hamida. Um, I think uh, most of the speakers have already uh, said which I can only reiterate. Uh, firstly, about the certificates of origin. They were introduced during the time of quotas to ensure that member countries would only abide by the quotas allocated to them. After the suspension of quotas, the use of certificates of origin has only become a statistical resource for the organization to, pre to pre uh, prepare market reports. Uh, in terms of uh, Africa, uh, we now have the Africa free trade area where trade can be within countries without any barriers. And also in the last few months, uh, the Inter-African Coffee Organization, together with uh, lots of African country support, is now putting coffee onto the agenda of the African Union. This will give us the tool we need for Africa to expand in domestic consumption, value added. Uh, we have one country which is already doing soluble coffee. This should be repeated 
by other African countries. Uh, also, in terms of uh, regional early warning systems, which, uh, which Promec of Air has, uh, systems like this will be of advantage to the African countries where there's all these uh, uh, coffee diseases and all that. Uh, also to have funding through the Inter-African Coffee Organization and the African Coffee Facility to improve the sustainable production in Africa. Um, I think Africa United will achieve much more than Africa divided. Thank you very much. Thank you, Amida. Thank you, Ambassador Solomon Rutega. Thank you, Ambassador Ronald Magerwa. Uh, dear stakeholders, we have come to the end of the uh, presentation. We are very available for the uh, for as ma many questions as possible to seek clarification, but we want to reiterate that whatever we are doing is in the best interest of Uganda. Uh, we know there is a lot of pressure coming from the ICO, and we know the reasons why, and we as Uganda, we think we are on a good course. What we need is, if you need any clarification about this, ICO has no market or regulatory role. Coffee exports will continue unhindered. The issue of uh, certificate of origin has been uh, talked about, but we are moving at the future. We are looking at United Africa, where as Africa, we can uh, collaborate together as a block. We can trade within, but also we can negotiate at the higher level. Uh, thank you, and we wait for uh, your questions. And thank you again for your patience uh, and listening in through. Okay, uh, we'll take some, the questions from people who've raised their hands, starting with Victoria Sechitoleko. Thank you very much, moderator. And thank you very much, UCDA, for finally holding this meeting. As Mr. Lutega has observed, there is a lot of ignorance, and I don't, I don't fault anybody because all these years I have been involved in coffee, but I had never taken time to understand <clears throat> how ICO works or doesn't work. So in summary, 2017, 2018, I attended all the ICO meetings which took place. I was with the Women Coffee Organization of the world. And really, UCDA is extremely right. In fact, in my view, it is overdue. Why are we hearing so much noise? because ICO has been feasting on the subscriptions of the ignorant countries. That is one. Two, you are taking the bread out of their mouth. That is one. Two, Uganda has woken up. We are not supposed to wake up and they are afraid we shall wake up others, especially other Africans. So that will really lead to the collapse of ICO. So if you want to know why the noise is because somebody's bread 
is being removed. <clears throat> Somebody asked a question, which has been asked several times. <clears throat> How come some countries can sell their coffee at as high as $40 a kilo? The answer here is really very simple. <clears throat> When and if you deal in specialty coffee, <clears throat> you do away with all the middlemen. It is from you, the farmer, to the roaster, or to the, to the one who sells to the roaster. Most of the money which Uganda loses is middlemen, including ICO. So I'm really happy that uh, UCDA has woken up. Two, I want to request everybody before you write, especially if you if you are serious about Uganda, first read, understand, and call UCDA and have your questions answered before you put out a public statement. ICO is an NGO like all other NGOs, which has been feasting on us. Thank you, Uganda, for waking up. Better late than never. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Victoria. We are now going to have a look, then we shall be, we shall have Tony Mugoya. Thank you so much, uh, everyone. Um, my name, just my question is one. I'm Luke from Montelgon Agroforestry in Bali. Uh, now that we've not been paying for the ICO certificates, is it also possible for us not to pay for the Uganda certificate of origin? Thank you. Let's have Tony Mugoya, then they can respond to all those questions. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, everyone, for participating in this uh, very interesting discussion. Uh, my question really, oh, I feel, goes to Ambassador Rutega. I think uh, Uganda has taken the lead in uh, pointing out the issues that need to be addressed. I think, Ambassador, in your position as a Ayako uh, uh, boss, you need to rally all the other African countries and even maybe the other producing countries so that we have a united front. I think if we have more producing countries speaking the same language, you'll have greater leverage to address these issues. So let it not be just a Ugandan position, let it be an African position. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. Uh, let's have Joseph, then Amos. Can I go ahead? Yes, please go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, UCDA. Uh, thank you, Doctor, and uh, the, the ambassadors for, for the explanation well, well taken. Now, I mean, we, we, this is very intriguing that uh, uh, we've been hearing all these rumors and we, th we thought this would be a big issue. I don't know if I have to say, we don't know yet if, if it is going to be an issue because for me as an exporter, I have not even spoken to my buyers about uh, what ICO was saying about Uganda. Now, from your own uh, arrangement and your own uh, research about this, have you spoken to any of our buyers? Because you know the... Uh, especially the European ones, especially those ones that are in countries where ICO sits. Are they still willing to buy our coffee without the ICO uh, certificate or not? And of course, I wanted to, also to answer to the other person. We've not, we are not paying for the certificate of origin for Uganda uh, as we have not been paying for the ICO anyway. So I just want to know if you guys have spoken to our buyers and what is their view? I like the idea of concentrating on uh, trying to use more of the African market, uh, but that might need time. So what about those European buyers? What are their views about this? Thank you. Thank you, Amos. Let's have Namwan Jemili, then Kauka Ivan, and we can have some responses to those. Yes, thank you very much. I want to thank Doctor for the elaboration he has given. Uh, I'm just excited that as a coffee farmer and someone who is adding value 
we are going to benefit from whatever is going around the coffee industry to ensure that Ugandans benefit. But my humble request is that <clears throat> information is availed as fast as possible whenever a decision is taken so that we do not wait for social media to feed us with whatever it is feeding us so that we are so much worried and then going to all the chaos that has been started, has been caused such that information is disseminated as soon as possible. So this is so good that for us who are able to be online have been informed. And I just pray that UCDA has a strategy to make sure that even the last farmer in the village receives the authentic information about the coffee industry as a whole and the new developments that are coming up. Thank you very much. How can, please go ahead. If Ivan is not responding, I request uh, MD response to those questions, then we'll take another batch after. Yes, hello? Yes, Ivan. Yes, thank you very much for such a wonderful program, which I am also very happy. I'm called Ivan from Bali, a company called Zuku Kabora Coffee Company. And uh, specifically, what um, I've had lots of things and uh, for us, this season, we're looking at shipping, exporting our coffee to U Ukraine, Australia, and, um, and, uh, and uh, sorry, sorry. So, but the main, main question here is, uh, is that, uh, do we still look at that Korea, Ukraine, and, uh, and Australia? Do, we still, this, do they still need these ICOs? Yes, I'm very happy that the, the, the EBI has really explained, but just to check in, double check in, please. I know, as you already explained, it does not have any effect to us, the exporters. So that's why I've just come in to, again, to double check. Does it, this, I mean, the three countries, is it a must that we have to, uh, to, to like, ask to, to send, uh, to get the ICOs for them, please? Thank you. Thank you, Ivan. Let's uh, have response from the MD on those issues that have been raised. Uh, thank you all for the uh, for the questions, and the, thank you, Honorable Victoria Sechtoriko, for clarification on your personal experience uh, during the participation in the ICO discussions and meetings. Uh, and uh, I share with you, of course, some of you, uh, those issues in 2016, 2017. I had to keep interest in, in the same. And therefore, this uh, decision shared with the, all of you, I think, was made uh, on firm grounds. I want to respond to uh, Rajira on the issues of certificate of origin, because that's what has brought much apprehension. But uh, I hasten to add that this certificate of origin, uh, it's in the mind of, of people that this is a document which is attached there. Many of them don't even know the use. It's just counting how many documents are there, is certificate of origin there. Nobody's asking what is the use. So I, yes, you have put it to, uh, to our task to ask, but you also want to ask you, uh, since you have a direct, uh, a direct inquiry with your exporter, rather with your buyer, to also ask them whether this document uh, is sent, rather is required. But what I can assure you is that other commodities without, uh, where there is no umbrella organization like uh, ICO. Their certificate, Uganda a certificate is, is used to trade grain. Uh, we trade other commodities outside, uh, outside Uganda. And therefore our fears, your fears should not arise. We are going to follow up of course with the 
uh, writing to our import to our importing countries about this, but just to introduce them that is also going to be used for coffee. The good news is that there is no new document which we are introducing. The Uganda certificate of origin has always been used uh, in addition to the ICO certificate. And whether they are going to look for that ICO certificate is what we need uh, to seek information about. Uh, but I want also to, uh, to give you information that there are many non-ICO members who are actually using the ICO certificate. And I will give you a list. I will, I will share with you the, uh, the, uh, the document with all these members. Uh, and also there are members who are not members of the ICO, but also who import coffee and also who look at the certificate of origin. So what information is there that is not on other documents is, is a matter of debate. So again, these are some of the documents that have heard, uh, many producers as well, which had never been invented uh, after the quarters, and this the time is now. What is the relevance of these documents if they have nothing to do with, uh, with the trade? Only for statistics. So I refer to this team. Uh, for the, uh, Mr. Ivan from Uda, have no our embassy in Russia. We inform them about this. We've been also in discussion with them so that in their countries they can, they can also share uh, this kind of information. For information, uh, Australia, Australia are not even members of the why would they ask for some of the okay, so. But anyway, let's ask for let's for up. We don't want to have any uh, any uh, any disruptions in the trade. I want to reiterate: ICO has no market or regulatory role. It's a club for coffee producers and the importing countries sitting together to discuss about the challenges. And Ugandans ask, and other coffee producers are asking, can we have a mechanism of not just discussing, but also addressing these challenges in a tangible way? And that's where our negotiation is rotating about. Mr. Tony Mugoya, I, I hear you. We are in this thing together. We have to strengthen our Inter-Africa Coffee Organization. And we are very correct. We have. When we go to the meetings with the ICO, for example, we discuss as a block, as Africa. And therefore, running together uh, as to have one voice as Africa is paramount. And I can tell you within these two years, I'm not the one to sign these letters, but I know many of our neighbor, neighboring countries, others in Asia, who have made this? Who have moved it to the highest to, to the highest level to have uh, to to withdraw from the ICO? But because in the whole of bureaucracy, people don't know whether ICO is a UN agency and the implications. There is no much information about ICO. Uh, there is a lot of confusion. People are fearing. People are fearing to take to be the first one to throw a stone, but. They are watching Uganda. We have been uh, working very closely and following what Guatemala has gone, has been going. There is absolutely no uh, impact uh, on the trade. And uh, we had, I had asked, talked to, to the former president of the uh, uh, Guatemala Coffee Association, which has, who has been also uh, in the who has been representing IC, uh, Guatemala at the ICO, uh, and he's very surprised that Uganda we stayed all this long. Uh, we I had invited him to also to share their own experiences. I don't know whether he's online because we are the time difference is uh, is high, but let me ask uh, Mr. Uh, Ricardo 
whether you are online or you are a representative. Mr. Ricardo, or a representative from Guatemala, are you there to, uh, to share their, your own experiences? Yes, hello. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, just to uh, comment a little bit of uh, follow-up of what we've been discussing on, on the chat. Um, so my name is Juan Luis Barrios. I'm currently the, the president of Ana Cafe, the National uh, Coffee Association. I'm also a coffee grower, and um, I also do my own, my own exports. Um, but I've mentioned it several times there on the, on the chat. Uh, Guatemala has not had any negative effect on um, our exports, including, uh, there seems to be a, a, a little bit of discrepancy there, including any coffee that's delivered to the um, C market, the, the C contract market, uh, which is uh, basically uh, you know, the, New, the New York market, which where we sell the Arabic coffees. Um, I personally have been exporting um, to Japan with no issues uh, with the current uh, certificate of origin that we have. Japan is an ICO member. Uh, I also sell directly to uh, Norway no issues uh, selling to Germany and also everything has continued um, uh, as literally business as usual. Um, so that's uh, because I hear a lot of a lot of the fears and I can I can understand and I can relate as a coffee producer the last thing you want is um, the your coffee not to be sold because that's essentially our livelihood. Um, so again, just to let you know, uh, we, they're on trade per se, there has been absolutely zero uh, negative effect. Uh, last year, we were able to um, export actually more coffee than we had over the last several years, uh, and again, to all destinations. Um, out of our exports, uh, just to give you the, the latest numbers for the 2020 20. 21 harvest season, um, there was uh, a total of 50% of the coffee went to 39% went to the US, 11% went to Canada, 9% uh, went to Japan, 23% to all of Europe, 7% um, uh, to the People's Republic of China, 4% uh, to Korea, 3% to uh, Taiwan, the rest to other countries, including uh, Australia. Someone, some, there we go. Thank you. Um, so um, that has been basically a, uh, our experience. Um, a lot of what oh. drove our decision to um, step out of the ICO uh, was part of what has been mentioned in this presentation. Um, it was uh, a, quite a high bill uh, that we had to pay every year because of the way uh, we are set up in, in Guatemala. Um, that essentially is coming out of our pocket, the producers. Uh, and we were not seeing uh, a valid enough return for you know, for participating in the ICO, um, we rather uh, ever since we left the ICO, we've used the funds that we used to give to the ICO every year. We've been able to now hire more um, extension service field technicians so that we can service producers uh, better. Um, so that's part of what you know each. ICO member country needs to you know, weigh whether um, you know it's there's value in in remaining within the within the ICO. Thank you, Julian. Let's have Chasa and then uh, Robert.
then Andy can wrap it up with that. Because most of the comments in the chat section have already been addressed. That, thank you. Uh, thank you, sir, for, for, giving me the, for, for giving me this opportunity. Um, now, now that a decision has been made to get out of ICO, are we prepared to compete? Because what I know is that we have so many uh, producers, I mean, processors of coffee uh, with different standards and different laboring, different packaging. And uh, the, some of them don't have the, the, the recommended traceability where you can really trace something because these are the important things which the outside market look for. Not only outside, I mean, uh, not only the markets, but also the uh, the country's standards. For example, myself, I reside in Canada. They are look, they have to, they look at the labeling, the packaging, the traceability, and then, and then if there is anything, they can even send somebody to go and see. Okay, a certain packet let's say package or coffee was, uh, which was produced, it looks like it had a, a, a fertilizer, which wasn't, uh, which is not recommended. They will send somebody to go and trace where is that farm and how, what is the impact? Is, I mean, how big are the, uh, the, that kind of farm which is using that fertilizer? So now, my suggestion was, or is that, or my question is, do we have something like the former coffee marketing board? Because the value of coffee marketing board is really, really tremendous. Because when you see countries like, okay, for example, here in Canada, the biggest, I mean, most, most of, let's say 80%, of the coffee coming from Africa. It's coming from Kenya and Ethiopia. And Uganda, we, are, we, we produce more than uh, Kenya and Ethiopia, but there is no Ugandan coffee. It's, it's only some uh, in, uh, British Columbia and probably in uh, Alberta where they have it and a few uh, probably uh, in Quebec and Montreal. But most of these big stores, like Walmart and uh, these Loblos, they don't have Ugandan coffee. And yet our coffee is really sweet, good. It has a real aroma, sweet aroma. Me, whenever I go to Uganda, I have to buy packets and bring them here. And even I'm anticipating, I mean, uh, like uh, importing um, coffee here to Canada. But we need things, I mean, we need a coffee, a structure, something structured like coffee marketing board, which had a very big processor with experts who are expert, ex, providing expertise in testing, in quality control. All these, I mean, you can't, I mean, when you, had, you, when you have a, like a processor or somebody, uh, selling a few coffee worth of, uh, let's say, yeah, 50,000 uh, US dollars in a year. Why, oh, that one can't afford to hire really top quality personnel who will do the testing. Who will do also, I mean, you have to build a lab and even take some samples of the coffees and see, test them, what, what, what is in, in what is in the uh, in in the in those seeds? Are there some uh, some uh, mold like aflatoxins? I mean, those are the things which can be done by coffee marketing board. But right now, when I went to Uganda to find out about coffee uh, process, processors, there are so many different ones. All of them like it's kind of independent. Uh, they have to regulate their own uh, quality and so on. And it is the it is the import of that Ugandan coffee who has to take the labor to to kind of find out what is the quality or, or, or things like that, you know. 
So I'm wondering, is there anything in pipeline to set up a coffee marketing board where all other, many of the major processors will take their case or that or those seeds and let them be processed there and then they can buy or they can process the uh, the grounded roast or sell Thank them. You, sir. I think um, you've made your point. Okay. Let's uh, yeah, let's move on to Robert yeah. Yarhanga who will be the last and then we, <coughs> we can have the final remarks. Robert, are you there? Robert? Yes, I am. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to raise my issue. Mine is, there is a lot to talk about, about withdrawing Uganda from the, from the ICO. The, the Guatemala and Uganda, they are not comparable, in my opinion. <clears throat> Guatemala is, is, is too small, and a lot of their coffee go to North America, both US and Canada. All, most of their coffee is specialty coffee and doesn't actually tender on the, on the international exchange. Now, ours does actually tender. The tendering is what creates the opportunities that allow for the companies we see here, especially the ones that are hedged fully. Companies like Chagalanyi, like Kawakom, like uh, Olam, like Ugakov, um, companies like this, which, which buy 80% of the coffee here. It is what allows them to continuously be in the market to buy the coffee from our farmers. Tendering, tendering basically means that you can buy coffee here and if you don't have a roster to take it in Europe, you just take it to the exchange. The exchange has designated ports where they receive this coffee. And these ports are mostly in Europe. So you have ports like Hamburg, like um, you have ports in the US and, and, and you have designated warehouses where this coffee is received. A lot of you might have seen already, one of the reasons why the markets have been shooting through the roof is because certified stocks are depleting, are getting depleted. What are these certified stocks? Certified stocks are the coffees that origin countries tender. Coffees from certain origins like Uganda, like um, Brazil, Vietnam, these countries have coffees that can go to the exchange and the exchange actually gives you money and they keep this coffee. It is what we call certified stocks. When they reduce too much in these countries, prices shoot through the roof. And this is what is going on right now. So the question is today, Uganda's coffee gets tendered by, by the companies that are hedged. Companies, as I said, like Chagrani, like this, like uh, Ugakov, they tender this coffee and the coffee forms part of the certified stocks. Because of this, there is continuity in the market locally. So you, have, you can never have a farmer with some coffee that he's not able to sell, never in this country, never. Because, because of that continuity, even if the roaster is not there, even if uh, somebody in the US is not willing to buy Ugandan coffee, you buy anyway because you can tender it. Now, Without an, the tendering process involves an ICO certificate of origin. When you take it to a warehouse in Bremen or in Hamburg, they ask the certificate of origin is what they use to accept your coffee to be tendered. Now, without this as confirmation, this is Uganda's origin. How are we, are we going to achieve the grading discounts or the premiums that the market gives? It, it, it's something that I don't think somebody has thought about. I don't know. It's, it's, it's a trade thing. And it's not something you, 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 you interface with every day. No, you don't see it. Because the hedged companies are multinationals. They do this from the other side. When you see a company like Chagrani buying 60% of the coffee in Mount Elgon, where do you think the coffee is going? It's not going to some roster. Part of it is going to some roster, but a lot of it is just going to the market to be tendered and achieving the premiums or discounts from that is directly related to the ICO certificate of origin because that's what confirms to the exchange that yes, this is Ugandan coffee, therefore we will apply this premium or we will apply this discount. And it is a really, really um, 
it's a complex thing. Very few people get to interact with this. But a lot of our coffee, that's where it ends up. Thank you. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I end Thank you, Robert, there. for that submission. Yeah. So we are going to go back to MD so that he responds to the queries and also closes the meeting thereafter. Let me start by responding to Mr. Robert Biaruhanga with a lot of respect. One, I want to request you humbly when we are in, in a talk show like this uh, to respect a, each and everyone. We all have brains. We can make mistakes. We can do many good things. Let's respect each other. But let's not also think that the formation about a certain, uh, a certain thing is uh, only confined to a few people. Uh, we have been, the ICO certificate has been with us since uh, 1963. We have explained it was because of the quotas. We have also explained there are countries who have, who don't even grow coffee, who are not even members of the ICO, who export coffee. Why would you think a decision would be taken when there is going to be uh, all these uh, negative consequences? You think nobody thought about so, the impact on the market, but you are raising even issues about uh, tendering and hedging. Uh, we have in the chat, somebody who has mentioned, I've been at the rim of the Uganda uh, Chamber of Commerce, Trade and Industry. And we've been giving this certificate of origin as Uganda certificate of origin. Why would, why would I CEO be the one to define that this is from Uganda, not a certificate from Uganda. It's a mindset. By not by saying Guatemala is a small country, is it disrespect? They are trading, whether big or small. It doesn't mean that when you're a big country, you have to dictate terms. And that's what we are trying to say, that we are an origin of coffee as Uganda. Uh, uh, Ethiopia is an origin of coffee. We, we trade coffee according to the quality, not just the volumes. Can the certificate of origin, the only document, which is actually for statistics, describe quality? I think we can have one-on-one -on, -one on this, but let's scroll down. We are in this thing together. We want to promote Ugandan exports. We are the first one to see Ugandan exports going to the bigger markets. And when we mention about speciality coffee, that's the, exactly the, the direction we should be moving at. Not actually selling the coffee on the exchange. Can we work together to see how we can get our coffee? Just the volumes uh, Guatemala is pushing there, we can do it. And I think we should not say the status has been always like this, and we should be, uh, we should sit there and say uh, we are. Why are these exporters, multinationals, dominating the market? This is a question you guys we should be asking, and asking questions and finding solutions, rather than saying uh, this is how it is done and we remain like that. Uh, in terms of the to Mr. Kasa. I hear you about the standards, the issue of traceability, the packaging uh, is denying Uganda to actually uh, access deep markets. And that's part of the, uh, the efforts we are looking at. Uh, but this is not the role of ICO. ICO does not prescribe standards for trade of coffee. Issues of traceability and the packaging is not the role of ICO. This is the role of uh, the country. This is the role of private sector. And as UCDA, we will support wherever we can to see how we can access these markets. We have demonstrated it already with the recent capping uh, competition we had with the, uh, with the UK High Commission. I hope we can continue doing much more. Uh, we have a new role, which has the farmer registration, which is focusing on traceability. And that's what has been missing in, 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 our, in, our, in our trade. Kenya has been having a role on farmer registration. Traceability has been part of their trade. It's part of their role. Look at our, our role. It's only recent when uh, the issue of 
Farmer registration came in and people were again saying it is a bad practice. Thank you for raising this. We cannot do packaging until we do uh, value addition. And that's the issue we are focusing on. We are saying, can we concentrate on adding value on our trade? And again, we want to thank you for listening to us. Uh, we are a regulator. We don't claim to have all the information there is. If there are any disruptions in the trade, uh, we request you to come to us, write to us. I'm a phone call away. Doreen is a phone call away. All of us are a phone call away. We engage. We have embassies and high commissions in all these countries. If there is an issue of ICO certificate of origin, it should be solved at the end. And we want to uh, promise you to do everything possible to ensure that exports continue going seamlessly and interrupted. I thank you again. And uh, again, many of you have my phone contacts or uh, have contacts for Rora and Mr. Alfred Wamirego. Reach to us. You can go to our, our uh, to any of us. We have a website. We have uh, a core center. Bring those issues so that together, again, we can share them together so that we ensure our country continues thriving on a commodity we all thrive to uh, to derive uh, livelihoods from. Thank you.